So I am preaching this morning um, to my bookcase. All right, here we are. Uh, which is standing in for you. It's uh, not as charismatic or as good looking as you. So um, I hope you don't mind. Uh, but I am preaching within my office, which is a strange feeling. Uh, but I thought I'd share some thoughts from uh, Matthew chapter 14, the wonderful passage that Ruth had just shared from. And uh, I thought it just, uh, when she mentioned it to me, it just seemed to be the right the place to go in scripture. And a, a kind of stopping off point where we can gain some resources uh, for the journey uh, through the current crisis. Let's just pray t- as we as we delve into God's word together. Father God, we want to thank you for this uh, incredible and strange uh, and inspiring story of Jesus walking out on the waters of chaos. And we want to pray today that as we dig into it, Lord, you would uh, open our eyes to see Jesus, uh, that you'd help uh, reorient our gaze away from the, the wind and the waves and onto that beautiful face. And we pray, Lord, as we do so, we would uh, grow in courage and confidence, uh, seeing that not only do you rescue us from the threat of the chaos, but you also invite us to see the opportunities it presents for mission. And so we pray that you would speak to us today in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. So I have three points I want to make based on this passage. Number one, uh, a journey through chaos. Number two, a chaos treading rescuer. And number three, an invitation to step out. So firstly, a journey through chaos. I want you to picture the scene. It's the middle of the night. It's dark. Perhaps you can faintly see the the outline of the the distant hills that surround this vast lake of Galilee. And uh, the waters are choppy. The wind is up. There's this tiny little boat uh, full of scared faces pale perhaps uh, in the darkness and you're you're a long way from land you're in the middle of the lake and it's hard going because the wind is against you it seems to me that this is a in in many ways a metaphor for us um, a metaphor a picture as it were of the human predicament in general that as human beings we live in a chaotic world and we know that uh, quite potently at the moment uh, because of all that's going on not just in our own Uh, neck of the woods but across the globe and uh, in many ways human beings have uh, we cobble together don't we our little planks of wood and we we make a raft or a boat uh, and we're we're trying to stay afloat in a world of of chaos we have this little habitable vessel that we've uh, cobbled together and at times when the weather is good we feel like actually we're doing pretty well but every now and then uh, the wind gets up and the waves rock and we start to feel seasick and we realise actually we're quite vulnerable. That this little boat we're in could topple over or um, uh, be swamped and sink and, and we could drown. That's the reality of the world in which we live, isn't it? Uh, and the nature of the human predicament. Um, water in scripture has always been a, a metaphor for chaos. God in the in the beginning brings order out of out of the uh, of the chaos. The spirit hovers over the waters and so on. We've looked at that theme before. Um, but Jesus in this situation is again is the one who overcomes chaos. Um, I also think this boat is a is a description of the church in a way. I mean, literally back then. These, the entire church was in a physical boat crossing the lake. These are the disciples of Jesus and they're making their way. And, um, and, and sometimes they've got this, they've been, they've been instructed by Jesus to journey to the other side. OK, and it says literally they're going to the other side. They've been given this commission. They've been ordered, commanded, compelled by Jesus to cross. And uh, but it's hard going. They know there is another side and we know as believers that uh, we're heading towards ultimately another destination, the other side of the lake. But it's hard going and there's often a, a wind against us and it can be scary at times and choppy and, uh, and changey. We feel like a, a wave battered, wind hindered uh, boat uh, far from land in the middle of nowhere um, struggling to make headway. Well, in both the general sense and in the kind of church sense, Uh, Jesus makes all the difference for us. And that's what brings us to my second and longest point, which will be a chaos treading rescuer. What we find in this this story is that Jesus uh, appears as the uh, as the as the chaos treader. He literally treads down chaos. He walks on the waters and he quiets the wind. 
around him, as it were, and under his feet, a chaos coalesces into form and shape and substance and solidity. He brings order out of out of chaos, literally in this instance, you know, he is able to stand on something that shouldn't hold his weight. And we know that around Jesus, miracles often occurred uh, because his uh, presence um, represents a, a new and more potent variable in the formula. Uh, and he is shown to be the higher logic that he um, he is not subject to chaos, um, but rather he stands over and against it even literally in this instance. Uh, and as uh, in and around Jesus, all our hypotheses begin to break down and we realize that the world is a different one to the one that we uh, had assumed. And um, the disciples in this passage are constantly having to uh, reevaluate Jesus. We know that through the gospels, they're often trying to work out who Jesus is. And in many ways, the gospels are an ongoing revelation for the disciples. Uh, in Matthew chapter eight, the story of Jesus calming the wind and the waves um, the disciples ask the question, who is this man that even the wind and the waves obey him? A little bit further on in our passage, and again in another seascape scene, um, as Jesus walks on the water, um, the disciples say, truly, this, this, this is the Son of God. He is the Son of God. And so there's a sense of a deepening revelation as the journey progresses. Uh, and uh, that's always the case of discipleship. There is always more for us to find and discover about Jesus. Jesus often comes to us and appears strange. In this passage, um, Jesus uh, appears and the disciples think he's a ghost. He's a phantasm. He's, a, he's a, 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 an apparition, a spirit, and, and they're scared of him because he's not the Jesus they thought they knew. He's bigger. He's more. And, uh, and this process is important for discipleship. And ultimately, it leads the disciples to a deeper revelation of who Jesus is and indeed a deeper worship of him. And that's how the passage uh, closes, isn't it? Here Jesus um, reveals that he is even more. And uh, there's an echo here of Psalm 77. I've got my Bible over there. Uh, verse uh, 16 of Psalm 77 says this. When the waters saw you, O God, when the waters saw you, they were afraid. The very deep trembled. Verse 19, your way was through the sea, your path through the mighty waters, yet your footprints were unseen. You know, and there's this image there of, of the waters being fearful of God and, uh, and of his, his way being through the sea and his footprints unseen. I suppose you don't leave footprints in water because it's not solid, it's not like sand. Um, and, and here Jesus is enacting that very uh, passage, that truth about God in uh, in his uh, in the physical form um, there's another clue as well um, in uh, in Jesus message to the disciples when they cry out in fear he says um, take heart it is I do not be afraid now that phrase it is I in the Greek is ego I me um, which is literally means which literally means I am and there's a, a sense in which perhaps that Jesus is invoking the divine name that God revealed to the people of Israel I am um, that I am. And so Jesus here is, is uh, in the place of God, showing the power of God over uh, the created order and over chaos itself and, uh, and saying, it is I, I am. And it's this chaos treading, uh, great I am, this, this rescuer who rescues us. It's on the basis that he stands over and against chaos, that he is able to rescue us from chaos. He's not drowning next to us. He's standing um, uh, on solid ground, as it were, wherever he goes. And when Peter begins to sink, doesn't he? Uh, he cries out, Lord, save me. That's the heart cry of anyone who has reached out to, to Jesus from the midst of the chaos of sin and death. And we're heartened um, by the fact that Jesus immediately reaches out and catches him uh, and draws him to himself. Now, Jesus saves us. This is true uh, eternally and ultimately, first of all, um, because Jesus, though uh, not subject to chaos, chose to become subject to chaos and death and died on the cross. Three days later, he rose and, and held aloft, as it were, the plug, the dripping plug from the bottom of the, the ocean of chaos, which means that chaos is running down. And that's why in the book of Revelation, it says um, there will be no more sea. 
you know, that one day chaos will be um, undone, death will die, and every tear will be wiped away, that there'll be no more um, trouble or um, changeability that leads to death or suffering, but all uh, will be, um, God will be all in all. And so uh, one day uh, we will partake in that, the other side of the lake, as it were. And Jesus has secured that for us. So Jesus saves us. And that's the good news that we hold out in a chaotic world. And um, it's also true in a day to day sense, not just an eternal ultimate sense. But Jesus is the one who can um, bring rescue and deliverance from chaos in the here and now. In many ways, the disciples um, uh, are fearful because they have internalised, they've let the chaos start coming in. When Peter sees, uh, uh, it says he takes his eyes, kind of, he takes his eyes off Jesus, doesn't he? It says he starts, he says, seeing the wind, he became a friend, afraid and began to sink. Um, and sometimes when we take our eyes off Jesus and we turn them towards uh, the wind and the waves, it's like we begin to internalise that chaos and it begins to affect us. And, uh, and, and Jesus' message to us is to, uh, to say, take courage, take heart. It is I. Do not be afraid. And, and he restores again that inner peace and shalom, that solidity and substance that is founded in himself, um, which we can uh, then carry into the world ourselves. And so Jesus brings peace and he wants to bring peace to us today. I know a lot of us have been going through times of anxiousness and, and we can we can take our eyes off Jesus and begin to, as it were, worship the wind. Um, I don't know how you see the wind, actually. I, I was puzzled over that expression. How do you see the wind? Does that just literally mean that Peter is seeing the effects of the wind? Or is it that he's kind of seeing some, seeing more than is there? He's, he's starting to see those um, those kind of ghostly apparitions of, 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 possib of terrible possibilities and, uh, and, uh, and, and that begins to fill his mind and imagination more than Jesus is allowed to fill his heart. And that's what begins uh, him on this process of sinking as he begins to live out the, the logic of chaos rather than the logic of Christ. Well, if taking our eyes off Jesus is a, is a, leads to a sinking, then surely the inverse is true. Fixing our eyes on Jesus uh, brings peace, uh, brings heart and courage uh, and an end to fear. And uh, there's a lovely uh, old spiritual song, turn your eyes upon Jesus, look full in his wonderful face, and the things of this earth shall grow strangely dim in the light of his glory and grace, or something like that. And, and I think that's very, very true. My third and final point is this, that we are given by Jesus an invitation to step out. When Peter sees Jesus, he thinks, I want some of that. You know, his fear, uh, he's rescued from his fear and suddenly he's also seeing an opportunity. And Jesus doesn't just save us from, he saves us too. He doesn't just rescue us from the waters of chaos, he invites us into his mission. He invites us to engage the chaos. Um, I love this about Peter because uh, Peter gets this opportunity because he's proactive. You know, uh, Jesus doesn't say, hey guys, come out here. Peter says, Lord, if it's you, call me to come out and be with you. And Jesus says, come. I think sometimes uh, Jesus likes to be asked and he enjoys uh, the, us being proactive and taking initiative. And, uh, and uh, he, he, he can work with that. And so he invites Peter out for this incredible, um, unprecedented, unparalleled experience in, in all of human history of, uh, of being able um, to walk on water. Now, when, when he says come, uh, Peter steps out of the boat and like Jesus is able to walk on water. He, he is literally standing upon the word of Jesus and nothing else at that point. Yeah, He's literally living according to the logic of Christ and not to the worldly logic or the rules of nature. He's living according to the logic of Christ. And there are times in life when, uh, when faith can be mo most clearly seen and manifested and the kingdom can be most clearly seen because you're not standing on anything else. Every other structure or every other um, dependable has been removed. And there's, there's no other way of explaining it than to say this person is held up by a miracle. This person is sustained by the grace of God. This person is standing on the promises of God, nothing else. And I think there needs to be times in our lives where uh, we demonstrate that, where we, we live out the strange teachings of Jesus. One of my favourite quotes uh, by a guy called Shane Claiborne is something goes something like, 
um, uh, that we God's people must look strange um, in a rebellious and fallen world. We, meet, we need to live in ways that don't make sense without God. And I think when we begin to do that, we paint a compelling picture of this alternative reality, which is actually the true reality of Jesus. As we live out this new and higher logic of Christ uh, and begin, begin modelling this new world uh, to the old world, as it were, uh, we become conduits of the kingdom um, of Jesus. Uh, and we, when we, we demonstrate it through our Christ shaped lives, we become eloquent um, uh, expressors and articulators of, of, of Christ to the world. And that's that's a missional thing that we're called to do. Jesus calls us to engage the chaos. You know, have you noticed Jesus is out there? You know, he's out there in the chaos. Wherever Jesus went, he wasn't afraid to engage and, and get his uh, get stuck in, um, uh, engage with people that normal religious types didn't want to go near. He just sort of was in the thick of it. And here he is in the thick of the waves, you know, standing on the waters, engaging, bringing order and shalom. And uh, I think that we need to be uh, tune ourselves in, not just to think about how we how Jesus is going to help us uh, ride out this storm, but also be alive to the ways in which Jesus might be living, uh, leading us to engage with the chaos and and uh, proactively move outwards uh, in mission. You know, Peter could have stayed in the boat. We could stay in the boat in the days to come. We could make sure that we get through the current storm. But actually, there's a whole lot of need. There might be a whole lot of drowning people around us. And how might Jesus be calling us uh, with our eyes fixed on him to step out of the boat and help others? Ultimately, that's the adventure that's up for grabs for us and lead, lives, leads us to um, life in all its fullness. I don't know about you, but some of this, something about this current chaos has made me feel more alive at the same time as it's made me feel fearful. That actually th real things are at stake, it feels at the moment. Real things are at stake. And uh, that shocks us out of our, our normal kind of sleepiness. And um, this is the invitation of Jesus, that we can step out of the boat uh, with him. And uh, even if that's scary and times we feel we might be overwhelmed by that, Jesus is close at hand and ready to reach out and grab us. Let's avail ourselves of that invitation and that opportunity, that adventure um, in these current days. Um, and as the book written by John Ortberg um, was uh, cleverly titled, if you want to walk on water, you've got to get out of the boat. And so let's seek to do that in the days ahead. Amen. Let's pray, shall we? Father God, we thank you that you sent Jesus into the chaos of our lives and that you have rescued us ultimately, um, but also in the day to day cut and thrust of life. We thank you, Lord, that uh, Jesus has taken hold of us, reached out his hand and grabbed us, that because he uh, entered the chaos for our sake, uh, we can stand on solid ground. We can be sustained by his word. And we pray, Lord, that you would help us not to be fearful. Uh, not to worship the wind, but to keep our eyes fixed upon Jesus, the pioneer and perfecter of our faith. And we pray, Lord, that uh, in the days to come, you would help us to model the logic of Christ, not the logic of chaos, and help us to be couriers of peace um, to those around us who are troubled and afraid. We pray you'd help us to engage with the opportunities that you're sending us and help us to be faithful to you. Lord, hold us, we pray and carry us through these days. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. Um, we're going to be uh, have a few questions now that are going to come up on the screen. Um, a bit of music will play. And there's an opportunity just to reflect on those questions just for a few moments before we, we gather back. And uh, it may be that uh, they might spark some thoughts um, or prayers or actions on your part um, in the coming days. So here are the questions. <laughs> 